Okay, so imagine I'm brand new to Epicare, maybe a new nurse. What are some of the questions that I should be asking to get up to speed? It's like having a cheat sheet for this system. All right, question number one, system navigation. Like learning to get around a new city. How do I use this without getting lost? You got to find those shortcuts and landmarks. Like other keyboard shortcuts I can use, can I customize my dashboard? Those things can make a big difference. Okay, so take some time to learn the system, not just clicking around. Right. And speaking of customization, let's talk about clinical documentation. We know those templates are there to make note-taking easier, but how do I make them work for me? Yeah, a template that works for one docker might not work for another. Exactly. So you need to explore how to personalize them. Can I add my favorite phrases or diagnoses? Can I rearrange the flow sheets? It's about making it work for you. So it's not one size fits all. Let's talk about order entry. We talked about those order sets, but they could be intimidating to a new user. Just double check before you click that button. Does the order set make sense for this patient? Are there duplicate orders or drug interactions? Take a minute and review everything. Okay, so attention to detail is key. Now, medication administration, we talked about barcode scanning, but what are some tips for using it correctly? Pay attention to the prompts. Does it ask you to scan the wristband twice? Verify how the med is given. Just follow the prompts. Trust the system. You be methodical. What about decision support? Those alerts can be helpful, but also overwhelming. Don't just ignore them. Try to understand why they're popping up. Is it a drug interaction, a lab result? Use them to learn. Okay, so use those alerts to think critically. How about secure chat? Any tips for using it to stay in touch with the team? See how many ways you can use it. It's good for messages, but you can also make task lists or share notes. Find what works for you. Now those flow sheets, they can be a lot to look at. Focus on what's important for each patient. Are there vitals or labs that are really key? Use the filters to customize your view. So be selective with the data. Now, integration. We know Epicare talks to these other systems, but how do I deal with all that data? You have to know where to look for everything. Yeah. How is the data displayed? Are there tabs for certain things? Once you know where things are, it's much easier. Like learning the map of a library. Okay, now discharge planning. Anything a new user should keep in mind. Don't wait till the last minute. Start thinking about it early. Talk to the patient and their family. And use those Epicare tools. So be proactive. Okay, last question. What if I'm stuck? Just ask for help. Welcome to uh, our deep dive into Epicare inpatient. It's kind of like getting a backstage pass to how hospitals really work. We're going to be unpacking this software that's at the heart of so much in a hospital, from admission to discharge. You know what's so fascinating about it? Yeah. Epicare inpatient goes way beyond just keeping track of patients. It creates this intricate web of interconnected systems. And it really supports safer and more efficient care. Okay, so we've got a bunch of sources here. Articles, case studies, all that good stuff. They lay out the key features of the system. But we're not just going to list them off. We're going to dive into why they matter and how they impact everything, from like a doctor's decision-making to a nurse's workflow. Yeah, let's start with the foundation, I guess. Uh, okay. The key functions of Epicare and patient. You can think of each of them as kind of a specialized tool, you know, all designed to tackle a specific need in this complex world of hospital care. All right, first up, we've got clinical documentation. Sounds pretty basic. I'm guessing there's more to it than just typing up notes. Well, there's way more to it. It's where providers and nurses and staff record everything about the patient's care, their assessments, their notes, care plans. But here's what's really cool about it. Epicare streamlines this whole process. And it's not just digitizing paper charts. It uses these templates and these smart forms that make documentation more efficient mm -hmm. and crucially more accurate. So it's like a built-in checklist almost, making sure you're not missing any crucial details. But, I mean, doesn't that also raise concerns about over-reliance on templates? Like, could it stifle a doctor's individual judgment? That's such a good point. There's always this kind of balance to strike between standardization and individualized care. But think about it this way. These templates aren't meant to, like, replace a doctor's thinking. They're supposed to support it. And they free up cognitive space so the clinician can focus on the nuances of each case. Okay, so you're saying it's like it can be helpful, especially in a fast-paced environment like a hospital. Now let's talk about CPOE. Computerized provider order entry. Is that just a fancy way of saying doctors putting in orders for meds and tests electronically? Yeah, it is. But it's so much more than that. Think about it like this. A doctor is about to prescribe medication. CPOE makes that process faster, of course, but it also has this amazing ability to cross-reference the patient's entire medical history. 
and it can flag potential issues. Like imagine it could instantly alert the doctor to a potentially fatal drug interaction. That's the power of the system. That's pretty incredible. But I'm also hearing alarm bells in my head a little bit. What if the system's wrong? What if it flags a false positive and then a doctor hesitates to prescribe like unnecessary medication? You're so right to be cautious about that. No system is perfect and you always need human oversight. But think about the other side of that coin. What if it prevents a serious medication error that a human might have missed? CPOE is like an extra set of eyes, constantly vigilant, looking out for that potential harm. Okay, so it's a powerful tool, but one that requires that human touch and careful consideration. Now, once those orders are in the system, let's talk about how medication actually gets to the patient. And that's where medication administration comes in right now. Exactly. This feature is all about safety and accuracy. Think barcode scanning. A nurse scans both the patient's wristband and the medication just to verify that it matches up. Minimizing human error, especially in a high pressure setting like this where mistakes can happen. Okay, so it's like this digital double check system. But isn't there that risk again of becoming too reliant on the tech? What if the scanner malfunctions or the barcode's damaged? Those are good points. Mm -hmm. There's always backup procedures and protocols in place. But think about the big picture. Barcode scanning has like significantly reduced medication errors in hospitals. It's a crucial safety net for patients. All right, I'm noticing this kind of pattern here. Epicare and patient seems to be all about layering these safety nets into every stage of care. Now we touched on clinical decision support or CDS earlier, but let's unpack that a little more. Is it really like having a virtual consultant at your fingertips? In a way, yeah. 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 Imagine this, a critical lab result comes back for a patient. CDS can notify the right doctor instantly even if they're not physically at the hospital. It's all about using data in real time to drive timely and informed decisions. That sounds amazing. But what about information overload? Do doctors really want to be bombarded with alerts every time a lab result comes back? Yeah, I mean, that, that's a valid concern. And so CDS systems are designed with customization and filtering options. So doctors can prioritize what's most relevant to their patients and their workflow. You know, it's about finding that balance between being informed and being overwhelmed. Okay, so each feature fits into this bigger picture of creating this connected and data-driven approach to care. What's next on our list? Um, let's talk about care plans and pathways. These are crucial for coordinating care, especially when you have multiple specialists and nurses involved. Think of it as kind of a shared roadmap. It guides the entire team toward the same goals for the patient. So instead of everyone operating in silos, you're creating a more unified approach to care. But isn't there a risk of being too rigid? What if a patient's case doesn't fit neatly into one of those predefined pathways? That's where the art of medicine comes in, I think. Care plans and pathways aren't meant to be inflexible. They're meant to be starting points that you can adapt to each patient's needs and circumstances. So it's about providing a framework, not a straitjacket. Okay, that makes a lot more sense. Now let's talk about flow sheets. I've heard doctors mention them, but I'm not totally sure what they are. Think of them as dynamic timelines that visually track a patient's progress. They pull in data from different sources automatically. So you can see, for example, how a patient's vital signs are trending over time or how their lab results are changing in response to treatment. So it's like those stock market tickers, but instead of tracking dollars, they're tracking a patient's vitals. Yeah, exactly. That's pretty cool. But what about bias? Could a doctor get so focused on the data in front of them that they miss subtle cues from the patient? That's a really insightful point. It highlights the importance of not relying solely on any one piece of information, whether it's a flow sheet, a lab result, or even a patient's own words. Good medicine is about synthesizing all these things and using judgment to guide decision making. All right. So it's not just about the data. It's about how you apply it. We've talked about the importance of communication in healthcare a lot, but hospitals are these really busy places. How does Epic Care help these teams stay connected and on the same page? That's where Secure Chat comes in. It lets the care team members message each other instantly and securely, all within the context of the electronic record. It eliminates those phone tag nightmares and makes sure that everyone has the latest information. So it's like texting, but IPA compliant and specifically designed for healthcare communication. Exactly. That's really cool. I can see how that would be a game changer. But what about distractions? Are doctors going to be glued to their phones all day just responding to these messages instead of focusing on their patients? That's a valid concern, I think. You wow. really have to establish clear guidelines and expectations around communication. Secure chat should be used strategically 
not as a replacement for those face-to-face -face interactions. Okay, so it's powerful, but you need those clear boundaries. Now, hospitals use a lot of different systems, from labs to radiology to pharmacy. How does Epic Care handle all of that? Integration is one of its key strengths. It's designed to talk to all these other systems. So results and reports flow seamlessly into the patient's electronic chart. No more waiting on faxes or manually entering data. It creates a more unified and streamlined flow of information. Okay, that sounds like a huge time saver. But what about the potential for errors? What if data gets lost between these systems? That's a risk. So there's really rigorous testing and validation to make sure that the data is good. And human oversight is really important too. It's about having those checks and balances. Now with all this data flowing through Epic Care, how do hospitals make sense of it all? Reporting and analytics. Think of it as turning raw data into actionable insights. Epic Care can generate reports on basically anything from patient outcomes to medication usage to operational efficiency. So it's not just about managing care in the moment, it's about using data to learn and improve over time. Yeah, exactly. And these reports can be presented in these dashboards that are easy to use and understand. Yeah. So hospitals can make data-driven decisions that ultimately improve care. We've covered a lot of ground, but this is just the start of our deep dive. Next, we're going to walk through like a typical patient journey using Epicare inpatient. I think it's going to be fascinating. Yeah. So stick with us. Yeah, I can't wait to get into the nitty gritty of how this system really supports patients from admission to discharge. It's where those real aha moments happen. Absolutely. Okay, so we've explored these individual tools of Epicare inpatient. Now let's see how they all come together in like a real hospital. Are you ready to walk through that patient journey? Yeah, absolutely. So let's imagine a patient arriving at a hospital maybe through the ER. The first step is to get them registered in the system. We call this admission. Admission. Sounds simple enough, but I'm guessing it's more complicated than it sounds. Right. This is where the ADP system comes into play. Admission, discharge, and transfer. The patient gets a wristband with a unique barcode. Their information is recorded. A bed's assigned. So it's like checking into a hotel, but with way more data points. Yeah. And obviously, much higher stakes. Exactly. And this is where that patient tracking feature we were talking about really kicks in. The system knows where the patient is, their status, and who's responsible for their care. Okay, so we're starting to build this digital picture of the patient. What happens next? Next is assessment and documentation. Nurses and doctors do their initial evaluations, take a detailed medical history, perform a physical exam, Record vital signs. And this is all happening inside Epic Care, right? Yeah. Using those templates and smart forms we talked about. You got it. And remember how we were talking about potential downsides of templates? Well, here's where some of the good stuff comes in. Imagine a doctor assessing a patient with, like, chest pain. The system can automatically prompt them with questions that are specific to cardiac conditions so they don't miss any of those crucial details. Okay, so it's not just saving time. It's actually enhancing that quality of care. Exactly. And once the initial assessment is done, you start thinking about treatment. And that takes us to order management. Right. This is where those CPOE superpowers come in. But I'm still a little wary about relying too much on these predefined order sets. What if a patient needs something a little outside the box? That's where clinical judgment comes in. The order sets are like a starting point, not a rigid protocol. Doctors can always customize them or add individual orders as needed. Okay, so it's not humans versus machines. It's about using tech to support, not replace human expertise. I like that. Now, once those orders are in, how do we make sure that the medications and tests actually get done? Great question. This takes us to one of the most critical stages, medication administration. Remember that barcode scanning? That's where it really shines. Yeah, walk me through it. Okay, so let's say a nurse is about to give a patient their meds. They scan the patient's wristband. Then they scan the medication barcode. The system verifies everything right then and there. The right patient, the right medication. The right dose, the right time. So it's not just preventing those errors. It's also creating this record of every action. You got it. This documentation is so important for accountability and transparency. It's also really valuable for understanding patterns in care. Okay, so the data from each stage can be used for more than just managing that immediate situation. It's almost like building this massive database. Yeah, and that data gets even more powerful when you move into monitoring and communication. Right, because patient care isn't just a one-time thing. It's an ongoing process. Absolutely. This is where those flow sheets we talked about come in. Clinicians can see in real time how a patient's responding to treatment. Are their vital signs getting better? Are their lab results trending in the right direction? It's like having a dashboard for each patient. 
exactly. But I wonder, could a doctor get too focused on the data and miss something important during an exam? Yeah, that's an important thing to remember. Tech should never replace good judgment and attentiveness to the patient. <laughs> Flow sheets should complement, not substitute those human interactions. Okay, it's all about that balance. Now let's talk about communication. How does secure chat actually work in practice? Think of it as a messaging system just for healthcare. Doctors, nurses, pharmacists, they can all communicate securely within the platform. Keeps everyone in the loop. So it's not just quick messages. It's a central hub for all communication related to a patient. Exactly. Say a patient's lab results come back and they're concerning. The doctor can immediately message the nurse. Yeah. So they're both aware of what's going on and can coordinate. Secure chat can really streamline communication and prevent delays. What about confidentiality, though? Are there safeguards to make sure these messages are only seen by the right people? Oh, absolutely. So all the messages are encrypted and protected, and there's strict rules about who can access it. Okay, so again, it's about balance, facilitating communication and keeping things private. Right. As the patient starts to improve, the focus shifts to discharge planning. Okay, so we're starting to think about what happens after the hospital. Right. Discharge planning isn't just sending someone home with some papers. It's about a smooth transition back to their life. And I bet Epicare has tools for this, too. Oh, yeah. Clinicians can use the system to create personalized discharge instructions, manage medication reconciliation, even schedule those follow-up appointments. It's like a digital checklist, making sure nothing gets missed. Exactly. And this is where integration comes full circle. Say a patient needs a special medication after they leave, the doctor can send the prescription electronically to the pharmacy so they have it right away. So it's not just streamlining things inside the hospital. It's about that flow of information outside the hospital, too. You got it. And remember, reporting and analytics. Discharge data is really valuable for understanding patterns and finding ways to improve. It's not just about the individual. It's about everyone. Exactly. That's what's so great about a system like Epicare Inpatient. It's not just about managing tasks. It's about using tech to create this more connected and efficient and data-driven approach to care.